Steven, my trading warrior brother, don't worry. I won't, you know, make a move on you. Why, How are you doing? It's Stephen. Good. How are you? Good time I'm, to have you here. I'm, I'm, I, I'm pleased to be here. I When we arranged this, I said, oh, it's Valentine's Day. And then my wife yeah. said, oh, no, don't worry about it. So yeah. um, I really should be taking her to lunch today, but I'm with you instead, Dale. So you'll need to be my wow. Valentine. Yeah, yeah. Happy Valentine's Day. So you want to share your screen, Steve? Um, I wasn't going to share my okay. screen. We, All right. Well, we've then done this before. Show... We, just, we just had the conversation. Okay. Um, you want to show your face? Sure. All right. We could it's do not, talking. I, talking can't, I, I don't seem to be able to. Oh, it, let's see. Can you, you won't let me. Video. It won't let you? Okay. No, it says you cannot start your video. It's the host has stopped it. So you need to, you need to change something. Yeah. Okay. I, I'm not sure. Let me see. But while you're doing that, I'm going to just tell you that Go um, ahead. I had lunch. And so I'm in a kind of like a WeWork kind of place in central London. And um, two girls sitting beside me at the communal area and they're speaking Russian. So I said to them, well, what do you think President Putin's going to do? And um, they think he's going to do something. They don't think he's going to invade. But um, they think he's got to do something to save face because there's a huge number of troops amassing on the Ukrainian border. Yes. I don't think it's going to be I don't think they're going to be invading my perspective. I was talking to a few people about this. And um, the thing is that if you're President Putin right now, you are loving the situation because you've got European leaders queuing up to speak to you. And um, you've got President Biden on the phone every week. Putin must feel really, really important right now. And that's what he likes. And, um, of course, the oil price has been heading up. And that's exactly what Putin wants. That's exactly what Putin wants um, for the Russian economy. Right. So I think this is you know, exactly, exactly what Putin was hoping for. And um, I think it's all, you know, from his perspective, this is an ideal scenario. He might have to do something, some border skirmish. But I don't think, and interestingly, my Russian friends at lunchtime don't think that the Russian people want to invade Ukraine, which I thought was quite an interesting comment. Yeah, that's interesting because uh, I just heard his numbers are sixty-five percent. I mean, compare that to our president's. Okay, so he's popular in Russia. Yeah, I mean, that's a correct poll. He's he's he has been pretty popular, and of course, you know, the Russians are quite used to hardship. Yeah, <laughs> after all the years of communism. But, you know, like everybody else, they've got aspirations. They, you know, they want, they want a, you know, a buoyant economy. They want jobs. They want to make more money. And the Russian economy is contingent on the price of resources. So, you know, right now, Putin's got everything going for him. He's, I mean, if he wants to do something, he should do it now. Because, of course, the ability to retaliate is restricted um, by the fact that we all need the Russian gas. Yeah. So it's still winter, right? So he can do what he wants right now, and the, the ability to retaliate is restricted. What he needs to do is switch off the gas tap for a few days, and there'll be people in Germany who who can get you know can keep their homes and, and you know throughout Europe. So, but I, I just don't see, I just don't see what the upside for him is in invading Ukraine. And the, the well, thing- I, I know I some quite... uh, smart guys that uh, didn't think he would. And it's not because they're mind readers, it's because of what they're seeing in the ruble. Yeah. You had this failing rally Friday. It, didn't, it was unable to make new highs. And what they're seeing in the Russian stock indexes, they're, they say they're bullish, uh, you know, if you're an elitician, that it's bullish. We could pull back a little bit here on some of these uh, Russian indexes. But I mean, here's the ruble. And uh, 
uh, he thinks the ruble's headed a lot lower. So here's your daily, you know, when the dollar turns, if it has already, uh, that this could be some type of uh, real nice short, right? Yeah, and then the other, the other, I mean, you know, buying the Russian stock market, I mean, it, it, it takes an element of bravery today, but it's very energy intensive. Right. So if you believe the oil prices are going to head up higher and gas prices are going to improve in the next 12 months, then that could look like a really smart move. I mean, it might look like an awful move for a day or two if he does yeah. do something. But, yeah. um, you know, starting to do that or starting to edge into position might be a smart, might be a smart idea. I and mean, you see, it's, you trade it's just ruble? hitting support. Yeah. Do you trade? Yeah. They, these are the two ETFs that, uh, that are on the um, exchange, uh, two Russian ETFs, and they both look very similar. They're a little yeah. different in magnitude, but I know a lot of people that are, they're smart guys that are constructive on uh, Russian stocks, much more than Americans, U.S. Yeah. stocks. So, yeah, uh, you know, and, that, that speaks to, you're right, there's not going to be a war. And, I mean, the, the other thing to to know, I mean, uh, you know, they, I'm not particularly bullish of the of the U.S. stock market, but um, what well, you know, people are saying, oh, well, you know, the market's vulnerable because people are worried about Ukraine. I mean, if Russia invades Ukraine, it will make no difference whatsoever to any U.S. company's earnings. Or a few, I mean, energy prices might go up; it'll be that indirect effect. Apple might sell a few less iPhones in Russia, but I mean. <laughs> in There'll reality, less, less wheat on the global market. We took off yeah. uh, during this ramp. So I'm wondering yeah, I mean, be... uh, what you think, Steve. Uh, you know, we had uh, basically Friday in uh, the euro. I don't know what your focus on nowadays, but, you know, it was safe haven buying with what was going on. Do you think the dollar has already peaked or there's another push, uh, another new high coming in Dixie and that the euro could still see 110. Well, I'm thinking in the markets here. I think the, I think the dollar is, is well placed because it just looks like, you know, the, the, the U S as usual, um, when it comes to financial markets is less behind the curve than other central bankers. I wouldn't say that they're they're I mean, they're obviously behind the curve of central banks, but the American central banks a lot better than, most the Federal Reserve is a lot better than, than most of them, and so what we're going to get. Say the B BOE already raised rates twice, so yeah, but, aren't um, they ahead of the U.S.? Well, I suppose I mean I suppose the U.K. is, but you're talking about the the dollar euro, and okay. I I think the 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 euro um I think they're going to struggle to put rates up much. The thing is that. In the U.S., average earnings are going up significantly already, and that's not the case in Germany. They, you know, average earnings have gone up a bit, but not nowhere near at the rate that it's happening in the United States. the The specter of inflation is, is, I think, much more distant in Europe than it is in the U.S. The economy isn't isn't accelerating in the same way. I mean, the U.K. is slightly different. I mean, U.K. we do have a problem. But I don't think there's a, there's nearly as big a problem in Europe, and I think that Europe will really lag when it comes to interest rate rises. So if you know if the dollar is where you can get the higher rate of interest, then surely the dollar will strengthen. That's historically been the case. So I wouldn't be too, I wouldn't be too bearish on the on the dollar euro rate. Okay. All right, so uh, you're you're still a dollar bull. Uh, what do you think of the move we had in gold on Friday on this? Is this just uh, well, safe I, haven I'm, buying that'll dissipate? I'm being totally puzzled by the gold price because the gold price should be a lot higher. I mean, I've been bullish on gold for ten years now, and um, you know, I didn't I didn't sell it at the peak and kick myself, um, but I've been consistently buying it when it's been been bottoming down. And it just seems to me that um, we're in an environment which people are accepting that there's going to be higher inflation. 
people have been buying cryptocurrency, but they haven't been buying gold. And that doesn't make a huge amount of sense to me. And I would have thought that, you know, the volatility in crypto should have had a positive impact on gold. Now, I don't think the markets really believe that there's going to be a Ukrainian invasion or gold would be a lot higher already. So I don't quite know why the gold, gold price hasn't been doing better than it has, but I, I think it will do better. It will do better, the gold. Yeah, I think it will. I mean, I, I don't see, you know, I mean, okay, interest rates are going up a bit, but they're still, still historically very low. If you've got an inflationary environment, you're trying to protect your, the purchasing power of your money. I mean, historically, that's been, gold has been a good place to do that, hasn't it? Yeah, and uh, silver looks like uh, it's outperforming. Again, last week it was pretty weak where gold was pushing to new highs. Silver just got back to its high of the week. So um, silver should follow then, right? You like silver? Well, silver, I mean, generally, I mean, in my experience, when silver has been leading gold, that's been that's been the bullish signal. Um, and the fact that it's not. Uh, well, I, I hear I mean, silver. Well, silver has been been My lagging hair. gold, hasn't it? Uh, it for, it's been sideways, but yeah. uh, this is so, the. I took some silver. I, I have it on my hair, but this is the gold silver ratio, and you know it's been in a huge range. It looks. I like mean, what I would like to see over. is I would like to see silver breaking out against gold because I think that would be a good, a good signal. But um, you know, I I think. Medium term, I think gold is still a good place to to have money. Okay, you following yields at all? I was calling for two percent a long time ago, and took longer than I thought, like most things yeah. do. What well, do you uh, think? Are, could rates be peaking in here? Well, I, I think if you you know, there's an element of um, worry about Ukraine. There's a you know, I read last week that we got seven hikes being priced in for 2022 i mean <laughs> that's quite a lot right um i i i don't i don't really see um why people should be buying bonds um you know the, the, there's it just doesn't just doesn't seem like a you know a very good place to put your money but i suspect that short term we've had we've had quite a good run and we might see a bit of consolidation that would be my guess but i mean you know there are huge swathes of people that have got 60 40 style portfolios that really shouldn't have because a 60 40 portfolio just isn't going to work for the next 10 years so all that all that money invested in bonds has to go somewhere else tina yeah, well, that's what it seems like, doesn't it? I mean, if you can find anything else, I mean, I I was talking to a friend of mine at the weekend, and I have had mixed experiences with um, residential property investment. Residential property investment is incredibly popular in the UK because it's, um, you know, we've got a situation in which we don't have enough houses. Yeah. So, you know, buying an apartment to rent it out has been a very lucrative, very profitable affair. But I've always disliked doing it because I've always had bad experiences, you know, tenants that are difficult, that don't pay, property refurbishment. And, you know, it's just that relative to owning a stock where if you change your mind, you can just sell it there and then. Selling a property, there's a lot of frictional costs here. There's a stamp duty, estate agents, realtor fees, and just the cost of, of doing it. I've never I've never liked it. How about uh, virtual virtual real estate? You buying? Oh yeah. Now? Well, what is that about, Dale? I mean, you and I are too old, right? We we just couldn't get that. But you know what? I mean, if everybody was playing a game in a virtual world and having a a home in that virtual world gave you an edge in the game 
I could understand that those properties would change value at a premium if there was a restriction on their production. But, you know, people are selling real estate in virtual worlds that there's no other reason to be in the virtual world other than to visit your virtual real estate. Well, that makes no sense at all to me. <laughs> why, why would anybody pay money for that? I mean, so I they have a place, so they have a place to put their NFTs. But, well, I mean, what's the value? You know, why would somebody pay $100,000 for a virtual mansion? Yeah. I mean, they, 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 I mean, look, if I'm missing something, please tell me. Please, somebody put it in the chat. Explain to me why, why, yeah. what, you know, why people are buying and selling virtual houses. I, bet, I expect that they're only buying it at the moment. They ain't, they ain't going to be selling, ain't going to be selling them for a premium. Oh, except- J- J- Jane says it's for laundering their NFTs. Well, I don't property. understand what that would be, though. I mean, I, I, just, um, I, I know. I I just thought I would <laughs> see. No, I, was, I was I was investigating this because I was thinking, you know, maybe I'm missing something, and maybe there's an opportunity. But and I think there would be an opportunity if there was a virtual world where people all wants to be. But we don't know where that is yet. Even yeah. Mark Zuckerberg doesn't know where that is yet. So once once we know that, then for sure there will be you know an interest in owning a, a a home, a store, a cinema, and having you know virtual commerce. I mean, I can completely I can completely understand that. But owning uh, you know owning a virtual home in Mauritius or wherever it just yeah. it doesn't make any sense. Okay, so uh, are you in kind of a uh, zone of not having a lot of uh, conviction about much with these markets right here, Stephen? That's just kind of what I'm getting from you. Well, that, uh, I, I mean, I think, you know, we're, we're in a period in which it wouldn't surprise me if the market trades sideways for 12 or 18 months and you just see a lot of rotation. And, you know, I think we've had a huge amount of rotation out of growth. And I think that short term has probably run its course, but it's not run its course for the next 18 months. And I think we're going to continue to see people selling stocks like Facebook and buying Exxon and JP Morgan. And I think we're we're going to be in that rotationary period for, I would guess, you know, a good certainly for the rest of 2022. I mean, it may be that it all happens quicker than I think, but I suspect that there'll be, you know, as, you know, usually happens, stock market doesn't go anywhere. There's a huge amount of rotation. And um, we'll then see, you know, as, you know, the results come through for the energy stocks and the banks and the value stocks, which have been neglected for so long, people will then be forced to sell their growth equities and buy into those. And so I think we've got, you know, there's probably quite a lot of pain to be endured by the people that have been buying these growth stocks. I mean, there's been some really uninformed buying out of some really poor quality companies at really high valuations. I mean, Peloton is the poster child for yeah. this. I am... Um, I've got a, a slide in my um, the course that I run for professional investors, which has got the, the slide that shows the the mottos of WeWork and Peloton, and ask you to guess the companies. And um, you know, you just need to you just need to read the the, the slogans it's of these fabulous. companies. You, oh. you know that it's absolutely stupid. I mean, you know. We work wants to change the world. Peloton slightly similar, and you know a lot of money has gone into these things, and I think people will endure a lot of pain before they finally get around to selling them. And I think it could be, you know, this could take the market just to get out of that that mindset and get into the mindset of buying real businesses again. Um, it takes six months. I think it'll take longer. I think it'll take longer. Okay. And I mean, it's quite interesting. You saw, I mean, Facebook and PayPal selling off by 25%. Yeah. Um, that, 
That's quite remarkable. I mean, I've never seen stocks of that size yeah. have corrections of that magnitude so quickly. 20% in a day. Yeah. Well, but, I mean, both of them were, were more than 20%. And you, if you think about that, Dale, right? Uh, I mean, there's, you know, clearly a huge amount of liquidity. Nothing that Facebook said was exactly new news, was it? I mean, my 12-year-old, now 13, he's on TikTok all day. He never is, He's never looked at Facebook. He's on TikTok. I mean, when I say he's on TikTok all day, if he's not in school, he's on TikTok, right? And on it constantly. And, um, you know, it cannot be new news to anybody that TikTok's competing for people's attention, younger people's attention with Facebook. Just like yeah. how many people are trapped here. Um, you know, when you have these big gaps and, you know, there were people hanging tough in it for, you know, a long time, even through this sell-off. But now they're trapped. All these people are trapped. Yeah, well, the, I, I think that's right. I mean, I happen to think that Facebook probably isn't, isn't the end of the world. You know, when you... We yeah. knew about the iOS changes. We knew that would cost them some revenue growth. And the thing that I think is quite interesting is Facebook is now trading a, a sub S&P 500 multiple. It's still, it's still forecasting revenue growth. Yeah. It's not like we're looking at it and going, oh, man, it's all over. And they're, they're shrinking. They're still, they think the business is still growing. And even if it doesn't have the growth in the number of subscribers, it's got a number of protections, I think. You know, first of all, is the, the price of the ads. I mean, I advertise behind the balance sheet on Facebook, and the ads are, are good value. I mean, if they put the price of the ads up, it wouldn't stop me advertising there. Um, the only thing that stopped me advertising there was if I wasn't making money by people, you know, seeing the ads and coming to my website. And I think we're some way away from that. And the other thing that I think people have forgotten is that um, Facebook, Meta Platforms, owns WhatsApp. How many yeah. WhatsApp groups are you in? Have you got in your phone, Dale? Not, none. None? Well, yeah. you're unusual. You know, I've got the neighbors. I've got the kids. I've, yeah. Those are you know, I've got encrypted. the school. I mean, yeah. and yeah. you know what? I, I, don't, I never see a single advert. Huh. I mean... Yeah. You know, All right. Okay. So you like, you know, long term, it could be, uh, uh, you know, a great position. It's just the market has had years of excess and it takes time for that to, uh, to ring it out. But yeah. I know guys that are looking for 6,000 S and P's this year. Well, I think they're going to be sorely disappointed. I mean, do you think that, do you think the market's going to rise that much? I mean, I know I've said there's no alternative, but, um, I don't, you know, we're, we're going to see, you know, liquidity being tightened rather than loosened. We've had two someone years else of... I respect is looking for 2,600. So, um, you know, there's a uh, you know, divergence of opinions here on the market. It's the first time there's been this kind of divergence of opinions in quite some time. Yes. You know, and I think that's quite healthy. Are, yeah. Yeah, so uh, not a one-way street. Um, not everyone's a genius because they own the spider passively anymore. So uh, it's going to change, and people are going to have to um, learn to be stock selectors instead of just you know buying an index. Yeah, well, I, I, I'm hoping that's the case because obviously my business is in teaching people how to pick stocks. So. Yeah. If they need a bit more help, that would be quite useful. Um, what's interesting, I think, is that um, I've seen and, you know, friends of mine have seen, you know, reduced volume. And your stuff is mainly, um, you know, the fundamentals. You go over the balance sheet, teach people how to read a balance sheet, see? That's right. Yeah. So teach them how to read a balance sheet, how to buy, um, how to find good stocks to buy, how to um, how to research them, how to value them, and um, you know we've got a lot of free material there, Dale. We've got a YouTube channel, it's youtubecom forward slash c forward slash behind the balance sheet. Lots of um, good stuff on there for okay. free. 
But, is that um, you, Steve? That's me. Um, okay. that, you know, I've been doing the videos now for a couple of years, but when I started, I was re- I found it really uncomfortable. I really didn't like doing it, and I've got that very pained expression. I should re-record that video because now I'm quite I'm much more relaxed about doing it. But um, it's funny when you when you start off these things, it's very hard not to be quite stiff because you're not. Yeah. You know, I, I I've done Bloomberg in front of the camera, you know, or CNBC. But then, it, it, you know, you're talking to someone doing a piece to camera where you're trying to I, did, I never even re- recited a script. I just made it up because I thought if I had a script, I'd be even more wooden. But um, I did it in a very casual way. And um, I, I just couldn't um, get myself to look normal and natural. Very, very. It's a very, very tricky thing. It's funny. Yeah. You can't teach it. No. It's a, it's the it factor, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Steve, thanks. Uh, maybe next time you could, uh, you know, go over some of the things that you look for in selecting uh, equities, and maybe even have a few examples of what you're looking. Oh, for. sure, I'd be happy to, Dale. Sorry, I, I, I mean, if you'd said, I would have been happy to. Happy oh, I to mean, do that. you know, I, I, you know, I interview a lot of people, and you know, uh, I remember going over your website before, but. You know, that'd be edifying, too. I like just bantering about everything going on with you, too, Steve. But, okay, cool. Well, so, let's time, next time, let's, let's time, let me run through one of the, one of the, one yeah. of the little mini courses that I do. That'd be great. Yeah. That, yeah. To it. Thank you that so way, much for yeah. having me. Yeah, that way the community can learn a little bit, right? Sure, absolutely. I'd be like, right. you take I, care. I appreciate your time, though, Steve, that you came No worries. In, came in I enjoyed and, it. Thank you. All right. Adios, everyone. Steve. Anyway, guys, uh, I'll see everyone for Turnaround Tuesday. And in 15 minutes, you could join the team on the morning edge. I'll see everyone tomorrow for Turnaround Tuesday. Silver pushing. Adios. Hey, traders, this is Blake Morrow with Forex Analytics. Thanks for stopping by our YouTube channel. Don't forget to like these videos share them, and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any of the content that we provide here for free. Thanks for stopping by. I'll see you in the next video.